All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk about a few licks I transcribed from a Pat Martino solo. It's from his solo over Just Trans from the record El Hombre. Before you throw the bananas at the screen, I know licks are a contagious topic in jazz, in improvised music, in everything. There's this whole debate. Should you learn licks because you shouldn't copy people? You should find your own voice? Is it really improvisation if you just regurgitate licks that you learned? There is truth to all of that. But at the start, I'm considering myself still being at the start. You have to learn licks. You have to learn the language. You have to build up vocabulary and take it from there. So today, it's just a little video about a few Pat Martino licks. I chose three, not because it's like the three most badass licks or anything. I chose the three because it's three licks over different harmonic things, different chords. And I think in this particular standards and in a lot of standards, you encounter to start those three things that are most common ones. Uh, lick number one will be about a dominant, lick number two about a 251, and lick number three just about a major chord. All right, let's jump into it. First lick I want to start with, it's probably the most famous one of Pat Martino. It's the one he plays in the pickup. If you look at this lick, what it actually is, it's quite simple in terms of note choice. It's, it's an F major seven with a sharp five. It's, E, 7th, C sharp, sharp 5, A major 3rd, and F root. And he plays that in the tune on the second last bar, where there would usually be an F major 7 chord. It's quite common for people to play a Lydian sound with a sharp 11 over a major 7 chord, or a slightly more augmented sound with a sharp 5. People do that all the time. There's a source for that, and I'm going to tell you the source because that leads to where I actually want to talk about this lick, because I don't want to talk about this particular point, but I want to talk about a point where he uses this later in a different context. So if you think about an F major 7 sharp 5 chord, it comes from a certain world. Similar to a G7 chord usually comes from, or very often comes from the world of C major. It's the fifth degree of C major. And if you build a chord there with the material of the C major scale, you get a G7 chord. Same thing can be said for an F major 7 sharp 5 chord. Only difference is it has a different context. It comes from a different world. It comes from the world of melodic minor. In this case, the world of D melodic minor. Because if you get the notes from D melodic minor, you get the notes D, E, F, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. Okay? If you have those notes and you go to the third degree, which is F in this case, and you build a chord, you get the notes F, a, C sharp, and E. So you get, as the four chord tones, you already get major seven sharp five chords. It's the flat third degree of the melodic minor scale. You always will get a major seven sharp five chord. That's where the sound comes from. Why do I tell you this? Because where he plays this lick later on in the solo is over G7. That's where he plays later on this. It's like, For one, it's cool that he uses the same material in a slightly different context. Why does that make sense? Why does that work? For once, the note that we actually play all makes sense over a G7 as well. E is the 13, C sharp, sharp 11, A is the 9th, F is the flat 7. So all of them make pretty much sense. Sharp 11 is maybe the only contention there. This is like a two dominant chord or a 5 or 5. In jazz, it's a very, very common thing to play a sharp 11 sound over there. It's technically, theoretically, a bit out there, because if you just fill it up with the notes of the environment we are in, F major, you technically would get a Mixolydian scale, but there's a whole point. <laughs> I have this great German book over there. Uh, it, it's holding up the light, so I can't show you, but it, it's it, it's a great theory book, and the guy in there makes a really sound argument where this sharp 11 chord on the 505 comes from, and I'll probably do another video about that, but it's a very common sound <laughs> to play the sharp 11 over this two dominant chord. You know it from Take the A Drink, for example, it's, it's in the melody there. Then you can think of this chord as a G7 sharp 11 sound. And a dominant sharp 11 chord also comes from a certain world, and it also comes from the world of melodic minor. It's usually the fourth degree of melodic minor. Just by coincidence, it happens to be the fourth degree of D melodic minor. The same source material we got our F augmented major chord from. Okay, if you go from D, D, E, F, G to the fourth degree, and build a chord with triads, you first get a normal G7 chord, G, B, D, F. But if you look at the extended notes when you build the scale through that chord, you have the C sharp, the sharp 11 in there. So they both kind of come from the same world, the D 
melodic minor scale, minor sound world, and he used that quite a lot on the solo. All right, let's look at lick number two. Lick number two is a good bit more simple. It's a good old two five one, and we listen to it here. <laughs> What does he do? He basically plays a G minor arpeggio. He starts on the 6 or 13, kind of the Dorian note of that mode, goes up to the flat 7, and then it's just a G minor arpeggio downwards. But then he just leads it down the scale, the, the G Dorian or the F major scale, whatever you want to call it, till here. And then there's this chromatic passing note that leads to the flat 7 of our dominant chord to C7. This chromatic passing note is a B natural. You could call that the chromatic passing, uh, the chromatic note from the G Dorian bebop scale or also which is the same thing, the C mixolydian bebop scale. I just see it really as a chromatic tone to have on beat one, the important flat seven. Then we have a leap upwards, a major seven, very nice leap to the 13th of the C, leading down to the E natural, the third of the chord. So what's really cool about this is like he basically plays the arpeggios kind of outlining the ease of that Dorian sound a little bit. Leading chromatically. So we have on the beat, the chord tone, and on beat three, the other chord tone. So sevens and third on beat one and three. That's like textbook bebop, textbook playing changes. Let's look at the last lick for today, lick number three. This is a lick over a major chord. A major chord is somewhat interesting in this case because I never learned licks over major chords in school. I learned like two five ones, dominance, altered stuff, minor two fives. The, the major chord somehow slipped my mind or the mind of whoever gave me material. So very often I just meandered on major chords and sometimes they forget that there's material for that as well or ideas we can learn. This one's kind of cool because it's based on a pentatonic at the start. It's over a chord of F major in the original and he starts on an A and plays the A minor pentatonic. So we get which gives us the notes A, C, D, E, G which are like our third, our fifth, our sixth, our seventh and our ninth of a F major chord. Pretty cool. Then he goes back to the root, to the ninth, and then he plays chromatically all the way upwards to the fifth, drops an octave, a little chromatic thing here, and all together you get okay, super simple line, really effective. You can use that over major seven or major six chord, it doesn't really matter, just like tonic or major chords, it works over all of that. It's really cool. Next thing I did, that's the last thing you can see it here, I just put those licks and that's the way you can practice it over another standard with somewhat similar harmony with different points. So I just put this material over the first part of There Will Never Be Another You and I'm just gonna play it here for you and you can, I won't tell you but you probably can see pretty quickly <laughs> which part of it is the Pet Mathena stuff and which is my own playing and I just kind of try to mash it up together. This is by no means the most creative way of playing and that's not necessarily how you should sound but this is a good way of practicing it because by putting that in between your own playing over time and over the years some of that either rhythmic or harmonic language will sink into your other playing and you will change those phrases up slightly or you will merge them with your own playing and that's one step on the ladder of finding your own voice and doing your own stuff okay <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this i'll do lots more videos i hope <laughs> in future about similar topics like that especially over the two dominant chords since i mentioned it now uh, thanks so much for tuning in and sticking with it uh it means a lot to me thanks so much bye